On Mississippi roads, we travel everywhere from the coast to the Delta and from the Piney Woods to the Mississippi River. This next story, we go to a few places I find interesting. Time and money not an issue. We have plenty of places to go in Mississippi. You can easily fill a large part of a day at some of them, a long weekend at others, and a lifetime going from place to place. Here's a building in Jackson that probably has the highest ratio of people who've driven past it as opposed to those who've actually stopped to see it than any other public building in the state. The War Memorial Building, next to the old Capitol downtown. It was built to commemorate the end of World War I. They called it the Great War. And of course, it took until the beginning of World War II to finish the building. So there went the designation of the Great War. But the building was finished by then, so the only commemoration of the Second World War are panels in the elevator doors. There are other panels on the entrance doors that reflect the conflicts and wars Mississippi and Mississippians have been involved in since the Explorer days in colonial times. One of the oddities on either side of the steps are bas-relief friezes of life in peace and war. And if you look closely, you'll notice all the figures have the same face. The Memorial for the Mississippi Unknown Soldier is here, a silent monument to the men and women who died in the line of duty protecting our state and our country. What you may not know is the War Memorial Building is also an office building with many agencies and organizations with connections to veterans located here. It's just downtown Jackson on State Street. If you drive Jackson, you probably pass by, maybe drop by sometime and see what there is to see here. Uh, here's a quick one. It's the old courthouse at Ashland. Ashland's the county seat of Benton County. That's the middle county along the Tennessee line. Tunica, DeSoto, and Marshall are to the west of it. Tippa, Alcorn, and Tishomingo to the east. But for some reason, Fairly early on in doing Mississippi roads, I noticed I had never been to Ashland. I thought I'd make it a challenge to see how long it would take for me to get there. And it wasn't right away, but I had to do an assignment at a farm fair in Michigan City right on the Tennessee line in Benton County. And although it was easier to go through Holly Springs to Michigan City, on my way home, I decided to purposefully swing off Highway 7 South onto Highway 72 East and then take Highway 5 South and go to Ashland and my GPS centered me on the old courthouse, now a museum. Now, I've been to Ashland, man. Moving on to an entirely different topic, thank Mansfield Downs if you boat Mississippi's small rivers and streams. I wouldn't have had any idea who he was until I read journalist Bill Miner's Eyes on Mississippi book. He lists Mr. Downs as a hero because he was the one person who convinced the legislature to revise the public streams law. In 1971, a public stream in Mississippi was one on which you could float a steamboat loaded with 200 bales of cotton for at least 30 straight days a year. A little outmoded, maybe. All of the other, smaller rivers, creeks, and bios belonged to the landowners through whose property they ran. That means if you wanted to try to float a creek or fish a small river, you might have been arrested for trespassing back then. But in 1971, by a squeaker, the legislature updated the public waterways qualifications and opened up about 90% of the places we can use today. And that may have never been done, or at least it wouldn't have been done when it was, had it not been for that one man taking on the establishment. So one person can do it. Our waterways are nature's gift to us. And since 1971, we can float, boat, or wade pretty much all of what we have of them in Mississippi. One more place I spent a lot of time since I left it after high school was the Delta. One of my childhood memories is riding with Daddy to Memphis on those flat, hot highways. The heat making a mirage you can see from a long way off in the flatland. Looked like the cars ahead were driving in water. My entertainment as we drove along was to watch to see if we'd ever catch up with the water. We never did. It's like we had Moses riding along, parting the deluge just before we'd get to it. The natural state of the Delta is wet, though. It's pretty much swamps and bios as recently as the Civil War. I mean, if you went there, you went in a boat. After the 1927 flood, the larger of these rivers that rolled out of the hills and into the Delta were dammed to better regulate the ebb and flow of nature's inundations as it rolled across the flatlands every spring. 
and now we have Grenada, Enid, Sardis, and Archibutla lakes to play in. Cotton in the Delta has been replaced by corn as of right now. Now that's subject to swing back or swing to something else over time, but it's corn right now. High enough to make you lose your landmarks when you're riding on the roads you haven't been on for a while. So there's the start of some of the places I've been, and I've just mentioned the places and not the people who populate them and the culture they've created as they live there. So stop and get to know the people, and you'll never get anywhere. But then again, you really wouldn't want to move on too quickly either, or you'll miss something. You'll miss Mississippi. Thanks for joining us. If you like what you see, subscribe to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Till next time. I'll be seeing you on Mississippi Roads. Down Mississippi.